using translate said and a spell this time on hack tip. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Shannon Morse, and today we are editing multiple documents or inputs right in the terminal. So, so far, I have shown you how to cut and paste, sort and merge documents, as well as compare document changes side by side. But what if you want to make specific changes to a set of characters, and those options are not available under one of those previous commands? Well, today, first, I'm going to show you the TR commands. So TR stands for translate or deleting characters, and you can translate, squeeze, or delete characters from standard input, writing the changes to standard output. Now, while this one only works on standard input and output, I'm also going to show you a command called sed, which will work on files as well. So let's go ahead and start with TR, or translate. Say, for example, you have a set of characters that you want to translate from uppercase to lowercase or vice versa. The first thing that we will type today is going to be an echo command. So I'll type echo. This is my test. All lowercase. I'm going to pipe that to the TR, or translate, command. I'm going to look for any letters between lowercase a through z and replace them with capital A through Z. Hit enter and you will see that it now shows that entire thing in uppercase. This is my test. And of course, if I switch that around, I can do the same thing. So uppercase A through Z is it's going to look for and then it will replace it with lowercase A through Z. And I'm just gonna change the last word in there. So now you can see that that uppercase test is turned into lowercase test down at the bottom. So this will translate the echo to all caps or to lowercase, no matter what you want. You can also describe what kind of transliteration that you want to happen with character sets. So you can either do A through Z, like I showed you in that example. You can spell it out, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and on and on, all the way to Z. Or with POSIX or POSIX characters, which we discussed back on episode 161, what is POSIX? So for a POSIX example, we'll look at my computer here, and I'm going to type in echo, this is a test, and I'm just going to capitalize test at the end there. And again, I'm going to pipe this over to translate, and this time I'll use a POSIX character set. So I'm going to type in, let's do upper, end it with the brackets, there we go. And then I'm going to include an A, and let's see what happens when I do this. Okay, so it took the uppercase letter, the only uppercase that it found according to that POSIX command, and it replaced it with an A. So it says this is a AS, whatever that means. <laughs> now to use translate to squeeze standard input, you could also do that as well. And for that example, I'm gonna do something very similar again. I'm gonna start with an echo command. And in this case, I'm going to pretend that I made a little glitch here and accidentally added an extra T to the beginning of the word test. I'll translate that, use tack S and T. Tack S is squeeze and look for the letter T and hit enter. And you'll see that it fixed that little mistake that I made and turned it into test with just one T. Well, two T's technically in the word, but one T at the beginning. So for this example, this will remove that extra T in the word test, but not all the other T's because it only works on adjoining characters. So this can be very useful if you tend to hit the same character twice on your keyboard whenever you type. And I, for one, whenever I'm reviewing a brand new keyboard, tend to do that sometimes. So I wanted to share that example with you. Next, we are going to talk about said, which is the stream editor for transforming and filtering text. What does that mean? But first, it's time for a quick break. IT people know how it is when all of those alerts and tickets light up your monitor like a Christmas tree. You aren't being productive, you're just stressed out. No mere mortal can analyze all of those alerts and respond to all of those tickets. But I have good news. You can immediately reduce that noise with Moogsoft AI Ops. Moogsoft AI Ops is an algorithmic IT ops platform that reduces your IT alerts and tickets by up to 99%. 
That's guaranteed. MoogSoft AI Ops platform integrates with all of your existing IT tools, and MoogSoft's patented technology correlates events into actionable work items called situations so that you can focus on tackling the stuff that actually matters. In one case study, a company was experiencing tons of alert fatigue, lack of context, and thousands of tickets. MoogSoft helped with reactive approaches to incident response tickets by enabling time to value, easing the integration of ITSM tools and existing existing monitoring, and increasing the quality of event correlation across multiple tools, and they saw a 33% reduction in mean time to restore in the business. With MoogSoft AI Ops, you can reduce your IT alerts and tickets by up to 99% right now. Visit MoogSoft.com to get a demo. That is M-O-O-G-S-O-F-T dot com. MoogSoft.com. We're back, and now it's time to discuss said. Yes. Said. Said stands for stream editor, and the man page shows that this command is used to filter and transform text. Yay, but what does that mean? It sounds kind of the same as translate, but really it's not. A stream editor is used for basic text transformations and is more efficient in that it can filter text in a pipeline. It can work with standard input or files and will work on each line of a file's data, not just one line, unless you want it to. It can do search and replace, such as if I type, for example, I'm gonna jump right into the example this time, echo, and I'm gonna echo moon and pipe that over to said. And for this example, I'm going to go ahead and search for the word moon and replace it with the word Mars and go ahead and close out of that, hit enter. And, oh, I said Mar. Hold on, let me change that. Mars, there we go, I can spell. So in this example, it searched for moon and it replaced it with Mars. Very easy to do. Now, if that echo text was multiple lines long, I could also add a line number, which is called an address, if you will, to the command like this. I would just use that same command, so I pressed up to hit that command right back. And I'm gonna add a one at the beginning of that quoted area. Now. Of course, in this case, it's just going to show Mars again because this echo is just one line. But if that echo command or if whatever document you are looking at has multiple lines in the command, you can easily change this to whatever number the line is that you're looking to change. Now, if you wanna have lots of fun with addresses, you can check out the man page for a full list because there are a lot of different things that you can do with those addresses. But what if you want to substitute data with said? So to do so, you can try typing in echo. I'm using the echo command again, and this is a with a capital T in test. I am piping this over to said, and my command is going to search for lowercase t's and replace them with up, uppercase t's. Hit enter, and there we go. So now we have this is a test with both t's at the beginning of each of those words capitalized as opposed to lowercase. Cool. Now this will just capitalize that first t in the sentence, as you noticed. If I add a slash g at the end, that makes it global, so each t is capitalized. So if I try that right now, I'll add the G at the end and hit enter. Now you can see that all three of the T's in my little phrase right here are capitalized. Cool. Now to do similar edits to a file, you can just add that TACF to the file name. And of course that is going to look for a file because TACF stands for file. Lastly for today is a spell or a spell, which can be used as an interactive spell checker. So to do an example with this one, I'm just going to type in, I'm gonna show you a text document that I have, it's moon.txt. It says, fighting evil by moonlight, winning love by light. So obviously this little area right here has a couple of little spelling errors. Nothing major, but I think a spell can help us. So I type in a spell, check, moon.txt, hit enter. And now it pulls up this really nice little interactive page showing the misspelled word and asking for which version of the word you would like to replace it with. So in this example, I'm gonna start with the word love, which I have a little P in there instead of an O. Of course, I can replace it with the first option here. So I'm gonna hit one. And then it automatically moves on to the next misspelled word, and that is daylight, but with an S instead of an A. So I look down here, and again, it's number one. Before I hit number one, though, I also wanted to mention down below all the options, and you'll see it gives me many options depending on the word and what it thinks I might want to replace it with. 
you'll also notice there's a bunch of extra options at the bottom. For example, I can hit an I for ignore, R for replace, B for abort, or X for exit. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it with one, and then it automatically closes out. So now if I type in cat moon.txt, I'll notice that I don't have any spelling errors anymore. I know this is a little weird. I'm going to go ahead and add those spelling errors back in with said, just to give you an example of how you can do that. So I would type in said, not seb, hi seb, tack i, and then I'm going to use s and replace love with that weird spelling of love, because, you know, it works like that. Uh, end it with my slash and then use a semicolon to separate from the next command. And the next one will be searching for daylight and replacing that with de, de sea light. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> it's for an example, so who cares? And then I'm going to add the text document that it's going to replace it in at the end and hit enter. Whoops, and of course, don't forget that closing slash at the end of that command. I always do that. So now if I cat moon.txt, you'll notice that those spelling errors are back in there. Okay, cool. So there's several different ways that you can use said, a spell, and TR for translate. Now make sure to check out the lengthy man page for a spell for more options and examples as well. But that's about it for today on Hack Tip. But I will be back next Friday with some more terminal tips as well. Until then, I wanna hear your feedback. Hit me up tips at hack5.org and be sure to comment below as well. And be sure to check out our sister show Hack5 for more great stuff just like this and I'll be there reminding you to trust your technolist.